What's going on you guys? Frost here and I am back with another video. In today's video I'll be doing an in-depth cane jungle guide. Now this guide will include both forms build-wise, however the gameplay is going to be for red form cane. Um, yeah, simply because blue form cane is good, like situationally, like you can pick up blue form cane into an enemy team that has at least three-ish squishies that you can kill. Two is manageable but three is a better place to pick it. If they have anything less than three, really, you don't want to pick blue form simply because it's going to be way, way too hard to be able to win team fights. Red form cane is just simply better. And overall, for people that are new to cane, I would advise red form simply because it's honestly the better form. If you can use blue form cane, by all means, it's not a bad form into squishy enemy comps. You can definitely snowball, but you have to snowball because you cannot end games late game with blue form. You have to do it early and you have to do it fast. So that being said, I'm going to start off with the blue form cane runes just to get that done. So for blue form cane, it's pretty much just dark harvest, sudden impact. This combination dark harvest is the stacks that you want to get. This is going to really easily stack up and allow like you to get a lot of positioning in those fights. So the, or like a lot of damage as well, because you can easily instantly one shot somebody with dark harvest. Blue Form Cane just jumps on targets, one shots them, gets the Dark Harvest proc and can do it again with that Dark Harvest proc really easily on the next target with even just an ultimate can be enough on a squishy target. Now Sudden Impact really synergizes well for the lethality, coming in from all kinds of directions at like massive speeds and leaps and dashes and whatever Cane has is really easily procced to Sudden Impact. Now here for lower elos I would just recommend Eyeball Collection. Simply because um, there is not enough wards being placed for zombie ward. And then to finish this off, I really think you should get Ravenous Hunter. Now, uh, people might think that on Blue Form Cane, Relentless would be better to get uh, the movement speed across the map. However, you are building pretty much full lethality on Blue Cane. So you're really looking to get the extra healing out of this. Like if you have Ravenous Hunter with a full lethality build and you ult somebody then that ultimate's going to do an, like, an immense amount of damage to a squishy. But you're instantly going to heal a lot from that as well, because it's kind of a single target. So having the extra sustain from this is pretty much going to help you through fights, through plays, over getting the extra move speed. You're already good on move speed with Kane. You don't have to worry about any of that. Your blue form is just zooming across the map, no problem. So don't, don't worry about this. You definitely need the extra sustain here. Now for blue form... The secondary tree would just be this. I would advise going for Presence of Mind. However, Triumph is also like good. The reason you want like Presence of Mind is simply because getting takedowns with Blue Form is really, really easy. And you are also using quite a significant amount of mana to do it on Kane. Kane is one of those champions that has a serious amount of mana problems. So having this Presence of Mind and just allowing for the extra maximum mana and also getting maximum mana back based on like after getting takedowns, which is just going to instantly mean that you have enough mana to sustain through fights. Now Triumph is also good simply for the missing health, so you can sustain yourself a bit better, but you have the Revenous Hunter to kind of counteract the sustain part, and that's why the mana sustain part kind of kicks in here with Presence of Mind. Now to synergize with this, you just want to get Coup de Gras to be able to assassinate them people really easily. This is just double adaptive, for the best jungle clear and then armor magic resist really based on the enemy team. So that's it for blue form cane. Now for red form cane you have the conqueror of course. Now for red form you have the option of going for triumph or presence of mind. Um, cane again still has a lot of mana problems. However for red form being in like in the thick of it and really frontlining for our team a lot. It's triumph is just going to be a bit better and you're just going to have to take the blue buffs really to be able to um, sustain your mana through the fights. So picking up Triumph here on red form is really what you want, because every single bit of missing HP, and you're going to have quite a significant amount of health, is going to matter a lot in late game team fights frontlining for your team. Now to synergize with that, you pretty much just want to get Tenacity. If they do not have enough CC, which is rarely the case, then you can also get the Alacrity one if you want, or even Bloodline really. That's up to you, but in 99% in of your games, you definitely want to get this for the frontlining ability, not being able to get CC'd as easily, and yeah, that's just really that. Now for the rune here, on red form, the last stand is the best bet. Simply, again, for the frontlining aspect and just the increased damage you get from that. The increased damage when you're getting low on HP also means that you can heal more because you do more damage. 
so you can get from low to full HP a lot easier. And that's just why the last hand is really good. Now for the secondary tree, again, the Ravenous Hunter is key. Healing, healing, healing is what you want. You want that sustain on red form. So definitely Conqueror with this. And then also your um, just kit in general is going to sustain you a heavy amount. And it's going to be really, really difficult to kill you. Now for this, again, Sudden Impact is the best bet. Simply because, well, your cane and this procking this is really easy. And this is also going to help your early game damage by a decent amount. Now this stays the same, double adaptive and whatever is good into the enemy team. So that's it for the runes. If you guys have questions on this, make sure to put those in the comments below. And I will get into the item build now. Alright, so starting off with the item build on Kane. The starting item is the Hunter's Talisman with the refillable potion. This is just a basic start. Also, the Warding Trinket is the one you want to start with. Place this Warding Trinket at about 50 seconds. Then reset and get a Red Trinket to be able to invade slash gank slash just know if there's vision while you're playing early game because you do not want to get collapsed on and die. So this is going to give you a good defensive or offensive vision and then this will allow you to play offensive like just in general now the main blue like the main smite you want to get is blue smite it's the best smite on kane simply because you can smite something and then instantly ult it so if you need to like um, if you're low and the enemy is like charging at you you can smite then ult and then getting out of the ultimate you're going to get a significant heal and then you can play the fight from there so the blue smite is really the best one also this helps you with landing your w's a little bit easier and that's really that so blue smite going from blue smite into there we go warrior warrior enchant is just for both forms of cane the best one to get hands down there's no better option than warrior so i either form it's warrior enchant rush get this as fast as possible this is good for clear speed and also just a really good item in general now first off we're going to go over blue form cane which is going to be quick and easy really so your boots on blue form cane is pretty much going to be mobility boots Getting this, roaming across the map, running at like lightning speed. Um, it's just the boots you want. Get position going. And from here on out, it's just damage, lethality, damage. So it's Duskblade is really the one. And synergize Duskblade really with the Edge of Night. Now Edge of Night is a gold tier item. Especially on Blue Form K now as well. Simply because you can have a spell shield on an AD champion. So you can run in at Blue Form, just instantly WQ something and then don't get cc'd locked by an ability just one ability that you can tank will make a massive difference also the extra health is nice but this is the item combination in lethal you definitely want to get getting anything else than this really isn't that efficient you have enough move speed out of your e and your mobility boost that ghost blade will not be worth it the umbral glaive doesn't really provide you with enough damage or like the ability to survive so the this gives you really the damage output and this gives you the survivability combination so that that's why this also isn't that great and sanguine blade i mean doesn't do anything for blue form cane so just this and going from here it's the guardian angel that you want really because guardian angel is going to help with survivability you can run in one shot like one or two people with your like qw auto attack into an ult auto attack and you will have two squishies out of the way no problem and then Guardian Angel is going to proc if you were to get bursted from there. So that's that. And from here on out, it's either one of the last whispers. Whichever one is better into the enemy team. If you need healing reduction, get this. If the enemy team is a bit more tanky, which usually if you're picking blue cane or like actually committing to that form, you will not have situations where the enemy team is going to be a lot more tanky. That this would actually be worth it. Usually going blue form cane will mean that you can get mortal reminder. And that's really just the full build on Kane. It's pretty straightforward. It's really that does play damage into the survivability from Edge of Night. Whilst also providing damage. And then just some survivability into even more damage. Yeah, that, that's a basic linear build. It doesn't really change based on games. So there's really not much else to say about this. Now from Blue Form Kane onwards. Let's go to Red Form Kane. This has a little bit more variety to it. So the boots you want on Red Form Kane are going to be Ninjas or Mercs, depending on the enemy team. If they have CC, get Mercs. If not, then get Ninjas for the extra sustain. Or like the extra sustain, sorry, the extra like tankiness, because it's just provide more tankiness than these boots do. Now also, um, you can combine going Ninjas with Tenacity Rune. And if they don't really have an absorbent amount of CC, you can just go with that combination and you will still be fine. 
So that's for it for the boots. So let's say just pick the boots there. Now going from here, there is one main item that you always want to get every single game on Red Form Kane, and it's Black Cleaver. Black Cleaver is the item that's going to give Kane or Red Form Kane at least his damage. It will shred the enemy's armor. CDR is really, really good on this as well. And this is just like his core item. Getting this will make you really, really strong suddenly. And basically the time you get the Black Cleaver is probably the time you will have your Red Form as well. Hopefully a little bit sooner you will have your form, but usually at around the same mark-ish. Like even if you're halfway through or if you're just like there. If you can get your red form before this, great. If you can get it at the same time, still fine, but yeah. So this is the core setup here. Now going from here, you have some variety when it comes to his build. Now with the recent buffs to Death Dance, or like for Kane, for red form Kane, these are definitely buffs. The extra armor magic resist from this pretty much mean that it, it it kind of just became a a set thing that you do like you can go for here like you can go for this and then build the age of legion you get 30 armor and 30 magic resist just for 1100 gold right after this making you a lot more tanky because this provided you with some health the black cleaver and then this will provide you with the armor and magic resist so this is good into both situations like if they have uh, physical damage or ap damage then this is good and just Death's Dance in general on Red Form Kane is incredible. Like the amount of healing, the amount of sustain you get, the amount of frontlining ability is crazy. So this kind of is just an item you just want to get every single game now. Simply because of the way they made it with armor and magic resist and physical damage and CDR. And then also the healing. Like this is just really good for Red Form in any, like in any situation. Now the only situation where this would not be viable is a situation where you are doing quite poorly. Because it's a 3600 gold item, which is quite a hefty amount. It it, it will uh, put you ahead or like push through a game quite easily. If you are getting a slight lead early game, that this pushes through a game no problem. However, if you're falling behind or unable to really get going with your form and everything. And just like slowing the game down, which can happen. Like you can get invaded or something can happen. And this item would not be too great. So then this would not be the option I would go for. Then I would just build... Tank items that will go well into the enemy team. Now, tank items that are good on Kane include Spirit Visage, which is really, really nice. It gives magic resist. Also gives the CDR, which is going to help you out in getting your abilities back more often, but also increases healing. So this is synergizes really well with Red Form. So this is usually the best magic resist item you can get. And this would be like something you could pick up if the enemy team is more magic damage heavy. Or if the enemy's AP characters are more fat than the AD characters, then you can just opt for this as well. So this would this just works really well simply because it's a 2800 gold item for quite a big value over this right here. This is like 800 gold more expensive. And if you're not doing too hot, like 800 gold can mean a lot of money. So that's the difference there. If the enemy team has more physical damage, you can of course still go for like a Thornmail. Thornmail is one of those items on Kane that is just really, really nice to have. Because most of the time, if you're Red Form Kane, the enemy is going to try to want to focus you and team fights or get you down as fast as possible because they do not want to have a red form cane in their fights for an extended period of time so this is usually one of those items that you can pick up into the heavier ad side of things however ninja tabis most of the time will get you through like enough physical damage or enough armor to be able to sustain and just buy a spirit visage no matter what really now the only situation where spirit visage obviously wouldn't be good is if the enemy team is literally full attack damage then just getting thornmill at this point if you're not doing too great and then finishing like that after a death's dance or maybe even picking another armor item that could just help even more would just be a good bet now just, the thornmill and the spirit visage are my go-to tank items for kane um simply because they are like they provide the most value because people are going to be hitting you so the effect from thornmill is going to be quite noticeable then but they also like the extra sustain from this helps red form quite a lot so these are usually my preferred ones Render Wins is one of those situational ones against crit damage. And Stone Plate is just an in general one. If you like are really, really falling behind. Because then you can have the AD armor and AD magic resist from this. To be able to sustain yourself on the front lines. And making it more difficult for the enemy to kill you. Now this also provides you with the passive. That's going to be able to sustain you through the front line as well. So this would be a good situation if you are just truly behind. And the entire enemy team is ahead. And you're somehow still managing to be in the game at this point. 
then stone plate would help in that situation. Stone plate is also a really amazing item to end off a build with, simply because of the um, like absorbent, like really high amount of armor and magic, which is just one item provides you, whilst at the same time giving you that active to soak even more damage. So that's it for really that. Now, if you're going for a standard build, I'd say, if you're doing a game well to good, then I would go for a situation like this, where you go Black Cleaver into Death's Dance. Now, at this point, you can pick one tank item. Um, this will come in the form of maybe Spirit Visage, or Thorn Mail, or even Stone Plate would be fine as well. Just one tank item. I would say against heavy or more heavy AP, you pick Spirit Visage. Against like more fat AD champions or just a full AD comp, you pick Thorn Mail. And if you are really like unsure about it, you can always pick Stone Plate because this will give you resistance, resistances to both sources. And to end off this build, you can again opt for one more tank item. So let's say you went for the Spirit Visage here and you want to end off this build with a Stone Plate or a Thorn Mail. That's completely fine. However, in most cases, it is better to just go for a Last Whisper at this point. Either to get the healing reduction if you didn't go stone plate, but if you already went stone plate, there's absolutely no reason to go mortal reminder. At that point, you might as well go for this one. But if you like, if if you were to look at it like this, then of course. But if you went for the spirit visage, then if you need the healing reduction, this one is really good. The extra armor pen from this means a lot as well in getting your damage through the enemies because. At this late in the game, they can have quite a significant amount of armor to where the Black Cleaver alone might not be enough. And then this would be the setup then. So the only other item I do want to mention here is the Guardian Angel. This can help you out quite a good amount if you are really getting ahead and you don't really have to build a tank item. If you're actually snowballing that hard that this would be a thing, then, I mean, good job, I suppose. So you can go Death's Dance and then into a Guardian Angel, which also works against attack or um, yeah, AD enemy teams. But Guardian Angel giving you that second life. Getting killing Red Cane once is a problem. Killing Red Cane again just becomes like stupidly hard. Like really, at that point, you can sustain back up, and this could be a very good synergy there. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the build for Kane. If you guys have any questions on this build for either forms, make sure to put those in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. If you guys have enjoyed this video so far, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button as well. It helps out quite a bit. And yeah, let's just get right into the gameplay section now. Alright, welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I'm playing Kane, of course, into a Hecarim. Now, this is a pretty good matchup for Kane, simply because it's going to be very clear speed dependent. And since Hecarim isn't the greatest champion early, early game, you don't really have to worry about that too much. Now, Kane is a really weak champion early, early game. You don't have a form, and Kane without a form basically is half a champion. So definitely having a decent matchup like this is going to be ideal situations to pick Kane. If you have more difficult matchups or more early game focused matchups, then you're going to have to play it a little bit more defensively sometimes, or maybe a little bit more in the way of trying to avoid the enemy jungle or, or something like that. And the thing with this matchup, however, is that he's going to most likely go for a full player. So I will not have too many camps from him to tax. However, if the enemy jungler is going to be an early game jungler, for example, and does like a red start into like red into blue gromp or something and go for a bot gank or a mid gank or something like that, then you can easily go and take his raptor camp, take his corrupt camp and then reset to full clear again. And that's going to give you a massive advantage simply because your clear speed is so good. And that's an experience lead. So my play is going to be simple. I'm just going to, I'm at this rate, just going to want to know where he starts. I'm going to start my red buff, get a good leash from bot lane to just propel me ahead with a better leash, better clear speed that way. You can definitely do leashless with Kane. Going leashless can just be starting Raptors, then using your Q the moment it spawns, and it will die in two Qs, like no problem. So you can easily just get the cooldown of your Q, and that's pretty much going to be the cooldown or the time you have, to, like need to kill the camp which is like seven seconds, so it's pretty easy there. And that's something you can do. Going from here, you can go upwards and just take Q into E, walk through this wall to kill red, walk through this wall, kill this. At this point, you could maybe invade the enemy's top side or something like that. That's a very viable solo start, or you can literally just go for like a gank or something if the enemy is pressuring or pushing in. So that's another play. That's not the play I'm going for. I'm going to go for just a full clear with leash route. I'm going to ward the enemy red buff here and reset at 50-ish seconds to get my sweeping trinket. This is going to allow me to potentially get a gank or an invade off, knowing if there is vision or not. 
So that's what I'm going to go for here. I'm just going to walk here and get Elise from my bot lane. Pretty simple start. Now, a few things, like, not really a few things. That's only really one thing you need to know about Kane and his clears. One is, uh, I mean, obviously you want to start Q because that's your main damage source. Two is picking E second is going to give you a lot of extra health sustain and also a clear speed increase because you can uh, skip certain parts, skip over walls, and it's going to be much better than picking the W second. I'm pretty sure there will be a lot of game players that think, well, okay, W needs ex means extra damage on cam, so it's better. It's definitely not. You definitely want to take E second simply for, for the sustain and then also the position or map position advantage it will create. So your clear speed is going to go up from that and there will be no difference as you can see, like, this would have been the same clear speed if I would have had, like, W maybe. Maybe even a little bit slower still with W because of the advantage I got for my E. Now again, I'm going to use my E to my advantage here. So you can m only make this distance from this wall to this third. You can barely make that. If you want to try to walk, like, through this wall and this way, then you will not, like, reach this wall or anything. So I'm just going to want to get here. I want to get the uh, like effect, the move speed through terrain, the 40% move speed. So this kind of cut off a couple seconds of my clear time again. So that's really what I'm going to go for. Now, a situation where you definitely cannot do this is if your mid laner is getting like pushed into about here. Because that means you're going to take experience from him or you're going to show yourself to the Syndra. Now, or like the enemy mid laner rather. It doesn't have to be Syndra, of course. But in this situation, I just walk across because I know I'm going to not be in vision. The wave is here, Syndra is here, so her vision range would probably be about, like, here, maybe. So definitely, right there, I can just walk through this wall, no problem. As you can see, I path this way. I have a 40% move speed increase doing this. Path like this, path towards my wolf camp, and this will save me an additional couple of seconds. Now, all of this efi time efficiency with your E, like, over this wall, and you could even use it backwards, like, going, like, here, and going back through the jungle, which would be fine. I just tend to like to use it like this if I have the opportunity to, if the way, or if the mid lane is in a decent position. If the mid lane would be in a bad position at this point, I would just use the second E here, walk through the camps here, and then just walk through my wolves, which would also be fine. It's just a couple seconds slower. So, yeah. Now, the final thing you need to know about Kane's jungle clear speed is that using your E into wall, or sorry, not your E, your Q into walls, pretty much instantly uh, procs the damage. So this can be used to like kill people 1v1 or just to uh, mainly speed up your jungle clear. You see the Q pretty much proc instant. Uh, I'll go back just to show that in this specific scenario. As you can see I Q through there and at this point I have the wolf pretty much next to the wall. So I'm just going to Q into the wall and these like the time for the Q is going to be pretty much instant. As you can see it's instant. Uh, it, it makes a slight difference so it's definitely better to just do it that way. Now here, one thing you can definitely do with Kane, as you see me do, you pull both camps together, and then you can kind of AOE him down. This is going to give your, like, increase the clear speed on your Gromp a little bit, because as you saw, I already chunked it for, like, a quarter of its health. So that's going to save me a couple seconds again, and that just puts me at a decent full clear. Now, in this specific situation, um, we see a very hefty, like, play slash fight going on on mid lane. The... Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I will just... I, the play happens whilst I'm pathing there. I initially wanted to just go for Scuttle, but as you can see, the Nautilus right here is hit, mid. TF right here, and the Hecarim is already coming in. He's level 3 currently. I have one camp on him by, like, simple jungle efficiency, really. Also, Kane has a better clear speed than Hecarim, so simply using that to your advantage will give you a lead. So you can see, like, this, this Nautilus gets engaged on, which isn't ideal. He dies. Um, I'm gonna come in here still, but Hecarim is just gonna suicide to Twisted Fate at that rate. And I see that the Aphelios is pinging on his way, so I'm like, uh, okay, I might be able to try something here. I can kind of bait him in a little bit. And as you can see right here, Aphelios shows up, so I'm like, alright, cool, let's let's do it, let's get him. Um, the Cinderella is out of mana, so she will not be able to return any damage. All the Aphelios had to do was just stay here for some pressure at this rate, since he already moved. Like, there is absolutely no reason for him to move, hit the Syndra once, and then move back. That's just weird. Like, he already moved, so he might as well stay. But instantly, instead of that, he just turns around, and I'm like, all right, well. And at this rate, if he would have stayed, Syndra would have died. Because she will only live if she can get through her turret this way. If she would have walked the other way and would have guided 
me out towards this side, she would never have survived because she would not have support of her turret or anything like that, which means that, that I would have been fine regardless. Now right here, she still had barrier, unfortunately, so I kind of underestimated that one and I die for it. A little bit, little bit sad there that I just, like, didn't take the barrier into account, really. And I mean a good bait from Cinder, that's all I can say. So I'm just gonna go and opt for the scuttle and opt for a clear again. I see the gangplank pushed in, basically. Or pushed in far enough to where I can gank him. Uh, Jack Springs, there's a ward here, so I instantly just use my E to go around. As you can see, I can just walk around. Jax goes in. I get a good amount of damage on the gangplank right here. Like... That's a really good chunk. With Kane, you definitely need to look for these opportunities. You cannot just be AFK farming. You definitely have to look for gank pressure. It would be, it would be very ideal if you can get the kill. However, if you don't get the kill in this like this situation, for example, I still did about like 80% of his health and damage, which is going to mean a lot of additional passive stacks. And those passive stacks are necessary for you to become a champion. So definitely, you definitely want to look towards some damage for passive stacks wherever you can. Now, I just wanted to back at that rate, honestly. Um, I'm pretty sure they were doing Drake, so at this rate, I would have just... I, I was top lane, I gave, pretty much give up on Dragon, and I'm just gonna tax whatever I can from the Hecarim. I know that his Raptor Camp is gonna be up, and I will probably leave it at that. Now, I think at this rate, I was like, all right, we might be able to kill the Syndra there with just Fate. However, I do, like, get greedy a little bit, I suppose, with the Gangplank ult coming in there, and Syndra's interactive ultimate let's call it that um i just get insta killed there so that's a little bit bad for me and at this rate i am in a pretty poor position early game so that's i that's something i'm gonna have to come back from which isn't really that hard like if you play it out smart like uh, you'll like see you're going to see this no problem like anyway i'll explain why as well now what i just saw was the hacker uh, on the map quite low might i add he was just mid lane so there are two things that this Hecarim can do right now. He can reset, which with the 1400 gold he has is the play he should make. So for that reason, instead of going for my own camps right now, I'm going to instantly just move up here. I should have queued to the wall, through the wall here though. If I queued through this wall, I would not have been spotted. However, with this question mark and me not queuing through this wall, I get spotted for a brief second here. That's not, that's not a really good play. So right here, the Hecarim starts spam pinging. And I mean, honestly... My bot lane has the pressure on them right here, so there's really nothing they can do. Also, I checked the mana beforehand, and with Zix's low mana pool, there's really not much he can do either. So checking manas from champions like Zix, Syndra is going to be very, very good for you. Now, Kane has a really good clear speed here, and I'm just going to pick up and take the blue before Hecarim can do anything. Now, the good thing here is, um, even though Hecarim has a lead on me right now, I have the advantage of my bot lane just getting the kills, so I'm definitely not scared to try and fight him. I could have easily ran away in some way because I'm Kane. I have the E to get over walls or to do anything to really like drag that out or just get away from him in general. He is not level 6 yet, and it's going to be pretty easy. But I also have a Twisted Fate on my team, which is what I noticed. So the Twisted Fate ultimate is easily going to allow like a Kane or just any jungler to play way more aggressive into the enemy's jungle. Because it, you have an instant Twisted Fate there, basically. So it's what I did in this situation, and I pick up the kill on Hecarim, which instantly puts me back into the game. So this is a really good situation for me. Now, all I really need to look for is just getting the clear on my camps going again. I need to make sure that I go for that. And the moment I had enough gold to back for my jungle item, I do that as well, so I'm not behind on the Hecarim. Now we're basically even again, even though he has like four kills, um, I'm only like 300-ish gold behind. Which isn't that big of a deal, since I usually will win a 1v1 anyway if I get my form. Now, I still don't have my form yet, but I'm pretty sure at this rate I should be very close. And uh, they've like re quite like recently buffed Kane's uh, ability to gain orbs as well. So you're going to notice it a little bit later on to to this to this minute mark that your orbs, orbs are going to just increase. Now here, the play I'm looking for, honestly, is maybe this guy, the Gangplank, like walking up this way. He might be warding here or something, so I'm just going to look. I'm just going to place the pink. I just placed the pink. I see him coming. Um, placing this control ward and also having control wards is really nice, of course. You definitely want to make sure you pick those up. But placing this control ward means that there's no ward in this brush. There's just not because I would have instantly spotted it. So he doesn't know I placed it and he doesn't know I'm coming. So he's still going to walk through the brush, through the brush. And I'm just going to go over the wall and just engage on him. At this rate, he, there's no way he can escape. 
I'm pretty sure his flash would have still been down, and it was, so that's really good there. And I get the kill on the gangplank, just by, like, noticing the positioning from him. Also, yeah, like, this wall, this is really easy to gank from, from for Kane, so that's really nice there. But those control wards, really, really the thing. Now, we see the fight going on on mid lane, so I instantly path towards mid lane. Use my E to get over this wall and with increased movement speed again, so I get a better position quicker. She flashes my Q, which is a pretty good play there. I still have my W though, so I can instantly ult her, and then I get the kill there. Their bot lane responded to this, but um, that's really not much they can get. We get the kill on Hecarim and the Syndra there, and I'm just going to be in an increasingly good position now after I got the kills, and this is the moment I pick up my form. So you can see me have red form already at 10 minutes. This is usually about the time you want to get it between like 10 minutes and 12 minutes. If you can get your form there, that's really good. A little bit later isn't that bad, but you definitely don't want to drag this to out to plus 15 minutes to get your form because that's just going to be a little bit late. So definitely need to play aggressive enough early game and pick enough fights early game to where you can get your form at about the 10 to 13 minute marks, let's say. So you see me pick that up and then instantly just go for the dragon the moment I can really get it. I had the vision control, I had the position, so I can easily like opt to do this dragon without a problem. The Hecarim is going to walk in here, pretty much get stunned, get CC locked by DTF, Nautilus, and then also Kane knock up and he dies. Now with Kane again, if I'm going to gank this bot lane, if they're going to walk up, then I can just go and E over this wall. So my an ideal place to place the control ward I have, again, control wards, place it here. So I know if this is warded behind them. They could have also warded here, potentially, but yeah. Um, I'm just gonna have to, like, I, if you can, take the camps from the enemy jungler wherever the opportunity arises. Because that's just gonna put them behind whilst putting you ahead. It's the perfect thing you can do. Yeah, it's the, the really that. And now here, they are gonna engage on the zigs. And I'm currently in a position to come in from behind. So I can just go over this wall without too much of a problem. Ziggs flashes, however, DTF comes in. I am unable to, like, tank the turret for this situation, so I'm just gonna have to drop turret aggro here. DTF is gonna gain turret aggro from that, but the minions are gonna come in. So I can walk with the minions, and the Ziggs dies. Now, the good thing about Kane here, red form Kane with Conqueror is completely insane in fights like this. And really, this is why. As you can see right here, um, I was quite low. I'm gonna play this a little bit slower. Here, I'm quite low, but I'm not worried at all. The only problem this, like, red form Kane has is mana problems. Health problems really are never a thing because you heal so much back. So, yeah. So, right here, I just want to, like, kind of flash Q this guy to get the kill. However, he already dies, which is honestly, like, not a big of a deal. I still have my Q there. I still get a couple stacks out of it. I instantly ult to prevent damage. And then also going out of my ultimate, as you see, I healed for 369. And that's going to put me at half HP again, which is really good. Then I land the W and Conqueror procs, which is going to give me increased healing and just a nice amount of adaptive damage. Now, the only issue I have right here is my mana problems. Because I would have been infinitely able to sustain through really his damage and even Syndra's damage if I wanted to. But with the mana I have, I only really have mana for like one more Q. And then it's going to start into turning into some problems. So right here, as you can see, I'm basically out of mana. I'm just hitting the, this guy, whatever. He is kind of chasing me, which is a little bit stupid from him, honestly. He should have just walked away and let Cinderella finish me. That would have been better. Kind of just poking me down. But at this rate, like, the good thing here is Cinderella walks like this. There was absolutely no chance with the positioning from Cinderella that she would ever kill me. So if I get the kill on Gangplank, I'm always going to get out simply because of the boots advantage I have. This is something you should check as well. At this rate, at this stage in the game, having tier 2 boots to nothing, she literally has no boots at all. She's never going to catch me. I currently have 385 move speed, and she has like 330. No chance he's ever going to catch me. So I, I can literally just walk out of that play at, at the end. And the all the sustain I had there was just guaranteed to win me that fight, really. Now here, coming out of base, just using the E through that wall to get the 40% increased move speed to get out of base just a little bit faster and get through my camps. Now I just want to clear, like, really get my jungle clear going again as fast as I can. And as you can see right now, again, the main issue this Kane form has is, or Kane has in general, is mana sustain. Mana problems are the big thing, and like Kane is like the 
the Cassiopeia for mid laners or like the Anivia for mid laners or something. However, Kane is not able to like really itemize mana. He's just not going to be able to really do that. So he's just going to have endless mana problems. For that reason, I always, always, always pick up blue buffs on Kane, regardless of who my mid laner is, really, because they can itemize for mana, and you as Kane cannot. The only situation where you don't want to take the blue buff from your mid laner is if your mid laner is like 6-0 and, and you're not doing too hot. Then just give the blue away because then it's going to be more on them than it's going to be on you. Most of the time you're going to not be able to live through a fight anyway long enough for your mana problems to really start kicking in. So apart from those situations, you definitely want to opt to go for the blue buffs yourself. The more blue buffs you have, the more of an unkillable monster you become because mana is the only thing really holding you back. Now, as right here, I just start the blue. I was like, oh, this guy's probably going to get out. I didn't think that they were going to still commit to him. And the moment I just saw this Hecarim like, coming in and committing to it, I instantly just turn away and run from blue to this situation. They do barely kill the Jax here. But yeah, at this rate, I just pick up a double kill. I smited the Gangplank. Uh, I didn't think... I don't think it was actually necessary if I look back at it. Because I think he would have died to the third shot anyway. Let me check here. Yeah, I would have died to the third shot anyway. I didn't... Either way, getting the kill for me isn't that bad. But I didn't have to smite him. I could have just smited, for example, the Hecarim to guarantee my kill on him as well. But I do pick up the double kill, which is fine. As you can see right here, just using my E as much as possible. You definitely don't want to be running around the map not using your E. You need to make sure that you constantly keep using that E to get over walls. To get more efficient pathing and save yourself some time. Alright, here I'm just going to opt to pull and pick up the Rift Herald. This will allow me to pressure down, for example, mid turret or maybe top turret in this case. I'm not sure where I'm going to use it. Yeah, I'm just going to use a top lane, put the pressure here. The reason I'm using this top lane as well is um, the Dragon is going to spawn soon. And usually placing like a Rift Herald top lane in a situation like this is going to mean that the enemy is going to react to that Rift Herald. So there is like a couple things I can do. I can like maybe try to fight the enemy if they walk like here somewhere, which... Judging from the pings right now as they are, um, they might walk like past here and I can just go over the wall and engage that. Or they're going to just collapse top lane and I can with my E just sprint through everything and go towards Dragon. And that's something I was planning on initially. But in this case, I see the hacker in here. Now, the moment I jump in, Yumi is the most annoying champion in the game. Let me just put that out first. But the moment I jump in, I get exhausted. The moment I get exhausted, I just instantly press ult. Simply to stall out the exhaust and to not get free damage from that. So right there, I just pretty much dodge the entire exhaust. Dodge that. Extend the fight. Kane is really good at extending the fight and allowing your team to get a better position on. So that's really what I did there. I just go in, knock him up, extend the fight by pressing ultimate. Making sure I wait out the exhaust. And then right here, get the play for dragon. Which was my initial plan, but yeah. Again, using the E there for the positioning through walls to get... To your jungle camps as fast as possible. And here I'm just going to back for the main item that's going to give Kane the damage on the enemy team. The Black Cleaver, which is going to be a huge power spike. Also, something to mention about Kane's maxing order. Um, you want to put 3 points into your Q first for clear speed, mainly. And apart from that, if you're going to go for red form anyway. Which is the best form by far, really. Like, blue form is good, but... Only in, if the enemy team has like two to three squishies that you can really delete. If they don't have that, I would not advise going blue cane. And overall, I would say red cane is better anyway. But with the red form, your Q doesn't increase in damage. It's pretty much just a flat amount. Um, so putting more Q, uh, like pour more points into this is useless. But you still need to put some points into it early game because your base form doesn't have the like that and it skills up so you do more damage there and you need it for clear speed so it's initially three points into your q and then after you have three points in your q you just kind of start maxing your w then max your q afterwards and and then at that point you can just go for e so that's that's really that and that's something i definitely wanted to mention as well now with my camps pretty much being down, I just want to scout this hacker and pressure him down. You need to make sure that if you have a lead on the enemy jungler like I have right now, that you pressure his camps down and make sure he is unable to farm. If you allow the like, if you're pretty pretty much just standard clearing your own like your own jungle camps, and you are not playing aggressive, then 
you are gonna allow the enemy jungler to get free farm and maybe get a chance to go back into the game and that would not be good for you at all. I'm looking for a play here to go in. I E over the wall, I knock off the zigs and yeah. All right, so the initial play there, the zigs does die there, which is good. And I'm just gonna try to walk away. Use Q for a little dash there. At this rate, the uh, Nautilus lands the hook. So I'm just gonna decide, all right, fine. I flash in, I CC chain my knock up with the hook and Syndra dies. And all my I have to do is escape over the wall with E. Now, if you're in combat, your E is pretty much going to instantly wear off. But you are always going to have enough time with your E to um, get over small walls like this. So I could just go up, hop over the wall a little bit and then get out. Now, also with Kane, um, it's something to note is if you're like in a wall or getting close to a wall or something and you use your Q. Um, after the, your Q dash is going to go in the wall, which means that you're going to have a little bit of extra dash range. To make sure that you will be able to get through the wall or get to the wall. So if you're walking like for example from here um, to your like raptor camp. Maybe this is a bad example. But if you're walking from like here to your raptor camp. And you you think that your E is going to time out right before you hit the wall. Then you can Q into the wall and your E is going to continue. So just having that little extra dash is a really good thing. And that's something you should think about and remember. So right here, I pretty much got out of that situation. Um, I'm just waiting around for maybe an opportunity to go for Ziggs. Ziggs does not commit to the Nautilus, however. I'm just going to place a ping to know if it's warded. Because if it's warded, I'm instantly going to have to back away. But it's not warded here, so I can just easily... He kind of walks up and kind of just dies for free. Now I get to play on mid lane. And I do remember this one. I was like, um, he's probably doing my red buff. Initially failed a Q over the wall, by the way. That's... Really, really good. Really smart player right there. And I'm just going to walk in. And this raid, I was like, I saw that Yumi thing and I was like, well, shit. Um, so I kind of messed this one up. And yeah, right here, I get exhausted, which is the most obnoxious thing ever. If I didn't get exhausted, I probably would have been fine. But that exhaust really put me down. And Yumi is just an annoying champion. Now here, this is a situation again where like the small things matter quite a lot in me potentially being able to survive. So just really look at the cooldowns I have and then look at the way I play this. So instantly here, I get exhausted. That's really, really annoying there. Now as you see, I only have my Q up and my W and E are up in like three seconds. My ult's up in five. If I can get, if I can stall this out barely to five seconds and get my ult on the Hecarim, I will live guaranteed no matter what. And they will both die. So it's really all I'm trying to go for. Now here, again, the queuing into the wall part. It's pretty much going to mean it's going to be instant to hit both the things. And right here, if my E comes up and I just glitch into the wall really fast, then I can get a heal from my E as well, which is really what I was hoping for at this rate. However, with Yumi's damage, I barely die the second this comes up. Like that was a split second and there was really... Almost no chance for me to react to that. So that's a bit bit unfortunate there. But it was just down to just half a second or something. To be able to live that. Because if I got the E in the wall. And then the W would have hit as well. I would have gotten my ult up and I would have been fine. So really my new things like that are really things that will differentiate good from bad game players. And that's really what's going to get you through fights. This is also something you'll see in the, I think a future fight in this game as well. So I, I'm dead here. I mean, this fight's going to continue. I'm not too sure why they're going to continue this fight so heavily, but they did do continue the fight, so it's whatever, really. I'm back up now. I mean, they're, they're still heavily diving this and going forward, kind of just inting at this point. I mean, this was a pretty bad in for me as well, to be fair. Like, I should have just let it go. But, yeah. They just go in. It's fine. At this rate, I'm just going to go and opt for this blue buff again. Because, well, blue buff is a core thing on Kane, Red form Kane especially. You need that sustain to be able to win those, like, win those fights. Now, the enemy's red buff just spawned as well as you saw right there. We see the Hecarim just dying in mid lane right now. So I'm like, okay, well, I could just take his camps and maybe go and take his red or something. However, this fight's gonna go and, um, like, not happen here, really. So the Gangplank walks up, gets engaged on, sorry. Get over the wall here. 
for myself. I, I pretty much just CC chain him there whatever I can. Then instantly ult to try and dodge Yumi ult as best as I can right there. Um, I land my W just barely not on the gangplank. However, I do still get my Q on him barely. I use my E to instantly get out over that wall to get myself a better positioning again for maybe like going in from behind if we're going to do this. But I'm definitely not trying to dive this or go overly aggressive. I just want to opt for his, like, again, pressuring the enemy jungler down, making sure that I deny him from farming back up and getting gold. So I'm just going to go and opt for that and then instantly reset towards the dragon again. Hecarim is engaging on bot lane and the Aphelios now is doing Drake. Uh, Hecarim is probably going to get the skill, but the, like he's never going to get to the dragon in time. So Aphelios will just get the dragon, which is really, really good from him, honestly. He made the priority play for the dragon, which is nice. So him picking up the dragon, I'm just going to go and opt to pick up more of my jungle. Currently with the Death's Dance, I have an immense power spike. Um, I'm just going to be very, very hard to kill and I do a lot of damage to the enemy team. And I'm just going to look to play aggressive with that. Throwing some vision in their bot side wherever I can, putting some control wards down, making sure that, again, you also keep buying those control wards. And, again, opt for the blue buff. Blue buff on Kane, say it again, it's really, really god tier because you have so many mana problems, it's actually insane. Now, right now, it's kind of a slow game. We need to wait for a catch, look for a catch, clear vision wherever you can, really, and yeah. Alright, so currently just pushing out the wave in mid lane, looking for that catch, going for something. Now, right here, we see the situation where the Cinder and the Six were walking this way, so I was like, I might be able to catch them in this position. I did land my W on the Cinder right there. However, my team catches the Yumi, and the second Yumi dies in a fight for us at this point is pretty much going to mean instantly that we win it. So I'm just going to hard commit and kill the Yumi as fast as I can before she can get back into anybody. So I just flash Q on Yumi right there. This also instantly gives me four stacks on my Conqueror, and this Conqueror is going to be the important thing that I need to keep stacked at this point. As you can see, um, with the Gangplank ult, my team is going to get kind of split. So I'm really going to opt to stall as much time as I can for my team to positionally uh, like get towards me again. So they have to position towards me, maybe look for a play this way. And as you can see, with the way this is going right now, my team is running, running after the Syndra. The TF is going here, the Aphelios as well. So I'm pretty much going to be in a 1v3 situation. If the Nautilus turns towards me right now, which I'm pretty sure he will. So that's why I'm like really ulting right here, as you see. Nautilus also actually walk running that way initially. That's a bit unfortunate there. But this is where Kane shines and Redform Kane really shines. You are a monster when it comes to these fights. I'll play this fight in slow motion. So this is all the micro mechanics that you need to know with Kane in slow motion in a late game team fight. So initially here I was trying to maybe catch this guy out, but again, I'm oh, sorry I pressed backspace. That's my bad. Go back a little bit. But this is this is gonna just look at the micro mechanics of this because that's very important. Also look at the conqueror stacks. You need to make sure that keeps being stacked because that's very important as well. So right here. Everything there, I use my knock up on him to get the proc, then instantly go out. Right here, I ult out, which is gonna instantly proc my conqueror as well as give me a nice 900 HP heal, basically. So I'm gonna go out of this guy, and then I'm gonna position myself, dash into the wall for a little bit of a reset there. Instantly press E into the wall again for a little bit of a heal. So I, you see me there instantly heal, get a little bit better position to maybe dodge a bomb that he would not have thrown into the wall as well, or maybe anything else really. Um, throw that into the wall so I get a lot of like efficient resets and efficient like micros there I heal there again at this rate I'm gonna have to wait for my W or or like Q to be up I'm basically waiting out cooldowns I have blue buff so I don't have to worry about mana too much but as you can see they're probably gonna chase me with the HP I have sidestep the bomb there instantly Q back into that team because my conqueror is still stacked and I'm still gonna get healing from death dance and conqueror so that's gonna heal me for an amount like an insane amount then I press W right there, get the heal, get my Q back up for good CDR, and then heal back to half HP. And that's basically fight over me 1v3 the enemy team. So one more time, just a little bit faster this time. This is the way to play it right here. Just uh, one time speed. Yeah, there we go. Knock up, instantly ult. Make sure that happens. Q, Q into the wall, or get a little bit reset. E into the wall instantly to potentially dodge bombs or dodge something else. 
walk up, kite up this way. Make sure you wait for your cooldown, sidestep the damage, Q back into the enemy team, hitting as many targets as possible. And then right here, queuing back into the enemy team on cooldown again after the knockup, healing again for as much damage as possible. And coming out of that fight 1v3 alive with half HP. Now, after that fight happening, we can instantly crow and pressure for Baron. This Baron is pretty much just going to mean that we can end the game with it, and that should be really fine. Now, me blue spawning again, you need that blue buff. That last fight, I would have guaranteed lost if I didn't have blue buff, because I would have ran out of mana. So, getting blue on Kane is, like, really big, even over a lot of mid laners, and definitely something you as a Kane player, especially if you lead, just take it. Really take it. Akram goes in. I don't want to play too aggressive right now because I am sitting on quite a hefty amount of gold. As you see, 2900. So I just want to play for this next dragon, which is going to be the soul as well. So I'm just going to reset for that. Pick up my item, which is going to be the Spirit of this game. Uh, simply because they have the Syndra and Ziggs with Yumi AP damage as well. I'm not that worried about their damage, honestly. Because he's not doing that great at this point. And I mean, his physical damage is negligible compared to their magic damage combined. So, picking up Spirit Visage is also going to increase my healing, but also gives me Magic Resist. At this rate, I have 160 Magic Resist, which is an absurd amount. So, they will never really kill me again. And with the Ocean Soul, it's basically over, because that's the amount of sustain that's just going to be, like, ridiculous. We just have to play aggressive now towards the Bolt Inhibitor. Let Jax push that in. I'm not going to greed for this. Like, you guys might think, well, why don't you kill that ward, actually? So I'm just checking for some vision, checking for some wards. There's a ward. Instantly Ziggs puts that down. Now the problem here is I have no vision on the entire enemy team. So if I were to hit that ward, these bombs don't do damage to me, really. But the damage would come in if the Syndra would like stun me and press ultimate. And I could potentially get bursted by their team. So that's definitely something I'm not looking for. That's not worth risking my life over one ward. That ward's not going to make a difference. So I'm just looking for a play to get in somewhere. Like, I'm just using my E to look where the enemy is, because it does give you a huge uh, field of vision as well. So you can easily use it for that, and we're just going to try to pressure in turrets wherever possible. Now, the Jax is pushing in bot lane right here towards the inhibitor. I definitely want to like look towards that as well. But again, I see in the corner of my eye a blue buff spawning, which means a huge amount for fights. This siege is still going to go on. Uh, they have a Zig, so it's... Pretty difficult to siege against this Ziggs Cinderella comp, so I definitely just want to prioritize looking for the blue if I can. However, the Hecarim engages on the Jack, so I instantly go towards that play and try to make a play happen here. Uh, the Yumi right there being annoying as ever. Um, at this rate, like honestly, for Kane, it, it's quite literally just try to land as many abilities on as many people as possible in team fights, and you should be able to win it. Fighting out in the open is a little bit less efficient for Kane. However, sometimes you, of course, can't help it. If you have the walls next to you from jungle camps, you can use your E to heal or reposition yourself a lot easier. That's not the case here, but yeah. Land the knockup on Syndra, land the Q easily off of that knockup because that's just a free Q. And then I instantly just gonna ult into Syndra to like get a better position and also make sure that she doesn't flash out or something. So right here, again, land the knockup. I could have queued in that, but the position here that I had here was not that great. Jax was dead. The Aphelios, or sorry, the TF was top lane, and the Aphelios is right here. So if I fight this, it's gonna be a one v like two v four kind of. But as you like see right here, I have the healing debuff on me, so I kind of have to respect not being able to one v four with the healing debuff on my nose because that's just gonna make sure that I heal for a lot less, and it's gonna be way too risky. So I'm instantly just gonna walk away a little bit here, like let three like. TF create the pressure, use the Ocean Dragon to sustain my health back and take the blue buff to get my mana pool back going. And then I can easily just opt to go back into a fight. Now here, I can just easily go aggressive, no real issues there. As you can see, I'm just going to go and allow Twisted Fate to hit the turret for as long as possible. He was sadly one auto attack off of getting the turret. Maybe I could have hit that one auto attack myself, but yeah, in this case, not really. Now, right here again. Like, this is one of those engages you can make as Kane. You don't have to really come from the side that much. Right, right here. They walk up like this. You can literally just flash W as you see me right do right there. I land the W knock up. And at this rate, my ult is back up. Because it's a 43 second cooldown. Which is really, really low with all the CDR that I do have. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm kept on CDR. So this is going to be an easy kill right there. Pick up that kill. I'm just going to queue out. Because I don't want to get Yumi ulted in turret range. That's not ideal. 
and just kite back, play it slow and play for turret again. We see the Ziggs on top. Um, Twisted Fate ults there. I'm just gonna instantly move with the Twisted Fate to potentially kill Ziggs. However, he does have stopwatch, which is a bit unfortunate there. And the Hecarim with Yumi decide to go on Twisted Fate. There's really not much that I can do about that. Hecarim is fairly tanky, especially having a Yumi on him. Like, Yumi just makes him even more annoying to deal with. So, right here, we do eventually kill him, as you see, but it takes a while. And the Yumi gets out of that one. Now, we had, in the meantime, get the mid turret, so that's really, really good for us. And right now, with this extended fight, I am looking to have quite a decent amount of gold. Baron is also going to be spawning quite soon, so we can definitely look for a play there. Now, my ult's back up again, so I'm just going to look aggressive, play, look to play aggressive, because it... With your ultimate, you can easily go into a fight having blue buff, you don't have to worry about mana, your ultimate's gonna give you a lot of healing, again, they're full HP, no problem. Get the position, Q into the both of those, pretty much half HP in the Syndra instantly. I don't have to worry too much about the damage that they would be able to put out on me, simply because I have the Spirit Visage and the Death's Dance for Magic Resist, so they will not be able to do much, and I can quite aggressively position myself. Now with Baron spawning here again soon, we can definitely look towards picking that up, no problem. But I also see another big objective, which is the blue buff again. Alright, here we just pick up the dragon. I initially wanted to back to get an item, but getting dragon here also... Or, sorry, Baron. Baron is also fine. I still do want to back for my item, though, at this rate, because I did have quite a significant amount of gold. I still have, like, 900 gold left after a buy. And I'm, at this rate, just going to walk towards the enemy inhibitor. And honestly, I probably didn't even have to back and we could have just ended, but yeah. This really is just the end of the game. So Red Form Kane is like really, really strong now, especially with his new Death Dance. Um, this really is Kane's playstyle. Just play aggressive, play forward. You might not have the best KDA on Kane in a lot of games, it's simply because you play that aggressive and you're gonna get hard focused a lot of the times. However, it's not really about the KDA with this champion. It's really about the positioning you have and just the mass amount of damage. And amount of damage you can soak because I believe this game I tanked about like seventy thousand damage whilst dealing the same amount or something like that. It was it's completely ridiculous. Like Kane in those types of fights, in team fights, late game team fights, it's just crazy strong. So yeah, that's pretty much been it for the Kane guide, guys. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button below. It does help me quite a lot. If you guys have questions on Kane, whatever questions at all, just put those in the comments as well. And yeah, see you guys in the next video. Bye!